Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of different payment methods, specifically the advantages and disadvantages of these various ways we can pay for things, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So when we need to pay for something, we have several different options, even more so now than were available 20 years ago. And I want to categorize them in two big chunks, and then we'll kind of break those chunks into even smaller chunks. But these options here are going to be split up into fees and no fees. Now, the fees method over here on the right, we don't necessarily see them on our side if we are the consumer. But if you are actually selling something and you want someone to pay you, if you are receiving money, there are ways that sometimes you get a payment method and it actually costs you a little percentage. So probably one of the easiest ways is cash. Uh, and so a lot of us like cash. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages. So I'm just going to kind of put those right there as a little plus and a little minus. So the uh, cash is there's absolutely no fees and it's instant and it's usually pretty easy uh, but the problem is is when you get large purchases you don't really want to be carrying hundreds or thousands of dollars in cash it can be kind of bulky um, so it's very easy everyone accepts it um, and so that's another positive is that everyone accepts but it's also not going to be the easiest for the larger purchases. Now the other one that has no fee is check. Now we don't use checks today nearly as much as uh, we used to 20 years ago. We've got all these other mobile payments we're going to get into. But there are no fees for a check. Um, I'm going to say that most accept. So that's kind of a negative. It's not as widely acceptable as cash. There are several uh, stores and several businesses that might not accept them anymore uh, simply because it's a piece of paper that's promising uh, to be paid and, and it can take sometimes five to seven days to process. And so you have to keep up with, if you write a check for $100 out of your account, you have to keep up with the fact that that uh, your account is going to be $100 less, and it might be five days from now, seven days from now, you don't know. And you can't spend that $100 on something else because when that check comes through, then it's going to uh, not process, or they'll call it a bounced check. And then uh, you'll face all kinds of fees, and the, per the person that took the money or the store that took the money is also going to have some big problems as well. So that delay is kind of a problem. Now, a lot of us are used to these ones over here that do charge some fees. Uh, so we've got debit, we've got debit cards. The nice thing about debit cards uh, is it is instant and it comes straight from uh, from your checking account. But we do have a little bit of a fee for those that are um, going to be receiving these payments. But debit is a really, really good way to go. Some of us like credit. So it's also instant, but one of the problems is, is you do have a little bit of a fee, and if you don't pay it back by the end of the month, you actually have to pay interest. So not only does the person who's receiving your payment have to pay a little bit of a fee, uh, they, they don't get all the money for the purchase, but you have to pay interest yourself if you don't pay it back by the end of the month. Now we have within the last few years picked up a whole bunch of mobile payments. Uh, so things like Cash App or Zelle, Venmo, PayPal, that's something that's kind of new and it's it's actually uh, instant, right? It's, it's very fast, but there is a little bit of a fee. Problem is, is not everyone uh, accepts and so you have to find a person that accepts Venmo or PayPal or has, a, has some type of Zelle account, Cash App account. But other than that, it kind of works as a debit card, so it kind of works like that. And those are the different payment methods.